Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Foundations of a Strong Marriage. And this was supposed to be the final video in the series where I will discuss how to make a marriage work, some final tips and advice. But I decided to add two more bonus videos to round it off to 20. Uh, so in the next video after this, I'm going to tackle a question that I received a lot. So I'm going to build out a whole video around it. That's the question of how do we deal with the trials of life? That very often when going through trials and, and tragedies, uh, it takes a strain on the marriage and people end up in divorce. So how do we deal with the trials of life? So next, the next video after this, video 19, will be about dealing with the trials of life as a team. That really, trials of life, if you tackle it in the right way, it should strengthen your marriage. It should make your bond stronger because you are going through difficulty together. So we're going to do a whole video on that. And then at the final video, video number 20, whatever other questions I've received over the past few months while we were recording this, I put together the most common questions. Uh, some of them are a bit controversial, but nonetheless, I'll tackle them. And our final video, video 20, will just be a Q&A where I will tackle the five to 10 most common questions I've received about marriage in this course. Right, so with that, we will round off the course with three more videos. This one focusing on some general tips on how to make your marriage work. The next one focusing on dealing with the trials of life. And the final one being frequently asked questions about marriage. And with that, Alhamdulillah, we are now very close to the end of this course. And I hope that you have truly, truly benefited from this. So, finding your way together. Alhamdulillah, marriage is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do it in a way that is pleasing to Allah, then there is barakah in it. And it becomes the primary source of peace and love and, and satisfaction in this world. It becomes your, your shelter against the trials of this world. But that's only when it's done in a way that is pleasing to Allah. We also know that marriage, when you do it in a way that is displeasing to Allah, it becomes a trial for the other person. It becomes oppression upon the other person. And therefore, you know, I want to start with advice to remind everyone to make sure that you are fulfilling your role as per the Quran and Sunnah. Beware of feminist ideas about marriage, individualist ideas about marriage, capitalist ideas about marriage, these new so-called red pill ideas about marriage. Focus on Quran and Sunnah. That your what you are following when it comes to building a good relationship is is that which is pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and on the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, jumping into our main topic for today, one of the main points that I want us all to understand is that every family is unique and will have ways of doing things that are unique to them and that work for them but don't work for anyone else. And, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Not every marriage has to look exactly the same. This is one of the problems I'm seeing with young people today is that people have the set idea of what a marriage looks like and they see somebody else's marriage doesn't fit into that box. They assume all of the worst things about those people, not realizing that as long as it's halal, it's fine. Let them do it their way. Culture plays a role. Economics play a role. Personality plays a role. Right? Our, our thick of marriage is flexible enough that you can have very unique families. That you can spend time with one family and then with a different family and you'll see that they're both very unique in their cultures and the, and the way they do things. And that's fine. So you may have one family where, you know, they have a very strict schedule where breakfast is at a certain time and lunch is at a certain time and, and dinner is at a certain time and there's home cooked meals three times a day and they're happy. Alhamdulillah, that's their life. That's what they enjoy. That, that's what keeps them going. You may have another family where they are homeschooling and they're traveling the world together and they don't really own a home and they're just going with the flow. Alhamdulillah, that works for them. Good for them. We need to stop putting people into little boxes, right? In this course, we have clarified what is clearly haram and what is clearly obligated in the Quran and Sunnah. Those areas, we try our best to do it exactly as Allah wants us to do it. But we also said that when it comes to certain things, Allah has left flexibility. In a lot of these areas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left it flexible. Uh, flexible based on culture, flexible based on economics, and even flexible based on your unique family structure. Every family's way of doing things is different. Some families have one meal together a day and the other meal separately. Some have three meals together a day. 
Some spend family time every day. Some have family time once a week. It's all different. It's all fine. It's all good. Right? Stop trying to put people into boxes. Stop trying to think that my marriage is different from others, so there must be something wrong with it. If you're happy, your family is happy, and you're not doing anything haram, then alhamdulillah, do what works for you. Another thing that's important for making a marriage work is that the husband and wife share a vision for their family. This is crucial, that you share a vision for your family. So if the man's vision is that his children, you know, uh, grow up to be the secular people who don't really practice Islam, and his wife's vision is to raise righteous Muslims, they are going to be clashing every step of the way. So make sure you marry someone who shares your vision. Make sure that you marry someone who's going to move the children in the same direction that you are moving them. That you have a, a joint vision of what you want your family to look like 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line and you are both working towards that same vision. If there is a clash in the vision, then there's going to be problems in the marriage. Right? If the man wants a hardcore Salafi family and the wife wants a spiritual Sufi family, there's going to be clash in the marriage. If, there's, uh, if the man wants a family that's homeschooling and mom wants the kids to go to school, there's going to be clashes in the marriage. So you, sometimes there's going to be differences. You need to sit together, talk it out, and come to a, a shared vision. That after discussion, and after research, and after hearing all sides, this is what we believe is the best future of our family and the best roadmap to get there. And you'll work, if you're always working together towards a shared vision, it will help you to overcome everything else that gets in the way. Third tip for making your marriage work, and this is crucial, this is something that people are failing at terribly in the modern era. Um, for some reason I got in trouble for saying this on Twitter the other day, people took it personally, or whatever it is what it is, it is a very important bit of marital advice. And that is keep your family life private and keep it off the internet. The world doesn't need to know. The world doesn't need to see happy smiley videos of you and your husband, you know, traveling the world together. The world doesn't need to know that your wife, you know, messed up the cooking today or that your husband and your mother-in-law had a fight in front of you today or that your husband refused to change the diapers or that your wife, you know, uh, is, is not wearing hijab properly. The world doesn't need to know. Keep your family life private. If you need help, speak to an elder, speak to an imam, speak to a counselor. Don't publicize it. Don't publicize the good or the bad. If you're publicizing the good, then there's going to be evil eye. There's going to be jealousy. There's going to be people who are going to try and break up your marriage because they want what you have, right? And if you publicize the bad, you are dishonoring your spouse. You are violating the sanctity of your marriage. You are bringing shame upon your family. So simple tip that will keep your family life happy and that will solve your problems faster is keep everything private and away from the internet. Use the internet for business, use the internet for dawah, use the internet for general discussions, keep your family out of it. The world doesn't need to know what's going on in your personal, private life. Tip number four, be your spouse's primary so source of support and strength. Be their pillar of strength. When the Prophet ﷺ received the first revelation and he, he was overwhelmed by it and not sure what to think of it, he went to his wife and he held her and he explained to her what happened and she was her, his pillar of support and strength in that moment. Both husband and wife will have times in their life where they will have to play this role. There are times where the man is going to have to be his wife's pillar of support and strength and there's times where the wife is going to have to be the husband's pillar of support and strength. And when you do that at that moment, when you are there to, to, to strengthen your spouse and to hold them up rather than to put them down, you make your marriage stronger than ever. You build bonds that become almost unbreakable. But if you use that moment to put your spouse down, to put yourself up, to pursue something greedy or selfish, then you are breaking up your marriage over petty things. So make sure that you are your spouse's, your, your spouse's primary source of support. That the husband knows during his difficult times he can rely on his wife for emotional support. And the wife knows during her difficult times she can rely on her husband for emotional support. And they both know that this that person is there for them in that way. This is the sunnah. This is the way of the early Muslims. This is what Allah really gave us spouses for. One of the primary purpose of a spouse is to have that person who you can rely on during your 
most you know vulnerable moments when you know you can't really talk to anyone else you know you've got that person who truly understands you and who will give you the best advice another aspect of making your marriage work that I want to just very quickly recap and we cover this throughout the course in a variety of different lessons is understand that the fic of marriage is very flexible it's flexible enough to accommodate a variety of different types of relationships so you will have the traditional marriage the man's the head of the household the wife's the stay-at-home mom they're raising the kids together alhamdulillah this is what Islam encourages this is the best type of marriage this is ideal and you know if you can strive for this alhamdulillah but understand the fit is flexible enough that other type of marriages work as well you may have a misyar relationship where a man marries a woman and he you know he just visits her once a week or once a month and he doesn't really play a role in her children's life uh, because she has children of previous marriages and he, he doesn't really feel like the head of her household uh, because he's only there once a week or once a month uh, and he's fine with that he's fine with that I'm doing it. if that works for them that's their business it's 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 halal uh, you have polygamous marriages a man may have four wives in four different cities or four different countries uh, and each of them play a different role in his life and uh, he is just and fair between them alhamdulillah that's fine too that's also fine understand there is flexibility here to accommodate a variety of different types of relationships you could have two students on campus who are married to each other they visit each other on weekends they go on dates with each other you know but they don't live to get together they don't have the traditional structure of a home yet that's also perfectly fine our fic is flexible because the the goal is to make halal as much as possible uh, as, as many relationships as possible that we want people to have access to halal relationships that's the goal we don't want people to fall into haram. We want them to have access to halal. And for that reason, Allah has made the, flick, the fiqh of marriage very flexible. So figure out what works for you and be clear regarding your expectations. If you are expecting a traditional marriage, uh, you need to be clear about that when you are having the pre-marriage discussions, right? If you are looking more for a misyar marriage, something where there's a bit more give and take on, on, on what are the roles in the family and how much time or money you'll spend on each other, then you need to be clear about that before marriage as well uh, if you plan to make nikah now and only move in together in two or three years time then again you need to be clear about that as long as you are clear about your expectations and the other person agrees and there's no deception it should be fine but at the same time even though there is flexibility you could have a messiah marriage you could have a marriage where the woman's the head of the household uh, you could have uh, a marriage where you know, a man only sees his wife once a month because they're living in different countries or whatever it is. Uh, you could have two students on campus who made nikah to each other. All of this is fine. But also understand at the end of the day, what's optimal, what's most encouraged is the traditional structure. Where the man's the head of the household and the woman is the heart of the household. And together, they are raising righteous children. This is the traditional structure that Islam encourages. So try to be as close to traditional as possible while understanding that there is some flexibility there to accommodate people's different situations. And at the end of the day, when you are in doubt, consult a scholar. If someone is wants to perform a nikah and you think it sounds shady and it doesn't sound right, consult a scholar. Uh, understand that there's a lot of gray areas here where sometimes the nikah would not be valid. Uh, if someone puts a time limit on the, on the nikah, not valid. If somebody gets makes nikah with the intention of divorce, difference of opinion some say the nikah is not valid some say the nikah is valid but the condition of divorce is not valid uh, but the nikah will take place anyway getting married without a mahram uh, without your guardian present according to most of the mazhabs is invalid only the hanafi mazhab will say it's valid there too there's a condition of kafa compatibility um, what else is there a difference of opinion on or whether nikah could be invalid uh, a secret nikah Right? A secret nikah could be invalid if there's no witnesses at all. Uh, if there are two witnesses, it's technically valid, but it's still something that the ulama would not encourage because a nikah is supposed to be known. If it's a secret, people are going to assume you're committing zina. So there are many of these things where there's, uh, where there's uh, doubtful areas. Whenever there's a doubtful area, speak to your local ulama. 
uh, get the advice and follow the ulama. Another thing that I want to mention now towards the end, and remember this, today's session is more general, uh, general advice on making a marriage work. It's not on a specific topic. Until we've, we've covered all the specific topics, now we're just giving some general advice that will help you to, to understand how to deal with the different uh, aspects of marriage. One of the things that young couples get scared of is change. And, you know, they reach a point after five or ten years with like, my spouse is changing, or life has changed, I don't like it. And the easiest way to deal with this is to accept that change is a part of life. Life goes through phases. You are always going to be changing, and your spouse is always going to be changing, and your circumstances are always going to be changing. You can't have what you had before. Now, I myself had to realize this recently, that I was missing the way my life was six months ago, and I, I did a journaling activity and told myself that that phase of life is over. Now I'm now in a different phase and I just have to move forward, right? Because cer some certain changes happen, people pass away, people grow old, people get sick, things happen that completely change your life. And everybody has to go through this. So understand that life goes through different phases. If you marry someone when you are 18 and that person is 20, you are not going to be the same people when you are uh, th uh, 30 and he's 32 and you're not going to be the same when you are 40 and he's 42 you're going to be in very different phases of your life and you're going to be very different people and that's fine and that's normal so I'm going to do a very brief overview of some of the phases of life and what marriage should look like at each phase of life and understand there's flexibility here some people get married earlier some people get married later this is just a general overview so 15 you hit puberty you are a young adult, right? So understand your young adult phase is like from 15 to 25. For most Muslims who are trying to preserve their, their, their chastity, somewhere between this age you're going to get married. Right? Probably around 20, 22, 23. Uh, you're gonna get married somewhere in this phase, right? You're also going to complete your studies, start building your career. Understand that this may be the most financially difficult phase of life. You are transitioning from a child to an adult. You are learning about business, you are learning about careers, you are learning about marriage, you're learning on the job, uh, you're learning about money. Your salary is not going to be anywhere near as good as it's going to be in your 30s or 40s. So financially, this is the most difficult time of, of, of your life. And if you get married during this phase, you have to be realistic and accept that you're not going to have a luxury life. You're not going to have the kind of life where you're like, you know, everything's five star, unless you marry someone who's like born a millionaire or got rich young, which is the exception, not the norm. This is the, part, the time of your life where you work hard, you put your head down, you make sacrifices, and you focus on delayed gratification. Understanding that working hard in this phase is gonna benefit you later in life, right? So be very, very clear about your expectations during the young adult phase. Then your early adulthood or the, the, the main part of, of, of a late adulthood. So this is where you are transitioning from a young adult into an adult where people now stop calling you a young man and just call you a man. Or they stop calling you a young lady and just call you a lady. And this I would roughly put between 25 to 35 or 25 to 40. At this phase of life, you should be more established. So you should have some savings, you should have a lot of skills built up of 10 to 15 years of personal development and reading and studying. You should be thriving in your career if you've been working your way up the career ladder, thriving your business if you've been building up your business experience. You should have children, you should be focused on raising your children. This is now where your life is starting to look like your vision. That vision you had when you were 20, you're not really gonna see it by 22, 23, 25. But hold on, as you're getting like 30, 32, 34, you're starting to see it. You're starting to see that finance that you wanted. You're starting to see your children growing into what you wanted. You're starting to see uh, your career take shape the way you wanted. Now you're starting to see results because life is it's slow really. It takes time. The things that we want overnight, they really take a lifetime to accomplish. They take a decade to accomplish. Now, for some people, they're only gonna get married in this phase. Um, the advantage of that is they, they they're probably going to be more financially strong when they start their marriage. Uh, so they're not going to go to that period of financial struggle of their marriage so much, but they're probably going to start their marriage with more money and with more, uh, with some savings and already high, uh, built up and with a high, high up the career ladder. 
Uh, the disadvantage is, well, it's unhealthy and unnatural to, to go that first part of your life without any sexual activity at all. That sexual intimacy between a man and a woman, Allah created a body such that from puberty we need it. So if you are delaying that for 15 years, that is not healthy. That has a lot of negative impact on your body. You're going to age faster. There's chances of you getting cancer from that. Uh, there's a variety of diseases related to that. It's going to affect your mood. It's going to affect your, your sleep. It's going to have a lot of negative health impacts. So, you know, there's, there's a trade-off here. Get married young, good for your health. Sunnah, barakah, but this financial struggle. Get married later, financial struggle is less, but, you know, you, you, there's a fear, if there's a fear of falling to zina, then don't delay at all. Uh, if there's no fear of zina, you know, you, 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 for whatever reason, don't fear falling into zina, you're able to control yourself that much, and then there's still the health issues to think about. But nonetheless, realistically, today many people get married in this phase, between 25 to 35. I still encourage people to get married as young as possible. Uh, struggling together will build your marriage on a much stronger foundation. Because when you get into your 30s and 40s and you look back and say, wow, we went through all that together, that's going to build a very strong bond of love. But if you only get married after you've already financially successful, your spouse isn't really going to appreciate uh, what you had to do to get there because they weren't along with you for the journey. Right? So there's trade-offs either way. And uh, again, there's nothing haram about waiting till your late 20s or early 30s to get married uh, if you don't fall into zina. But it's not natural and it's not healthy and I still highly discourage it. Now you reach your peak. And peak adulthood is like between 35 and 50. This is really where people are living their best life if they worked hard. If you did everything I said, the personal development, working your way up the career, ihsan, uh, you know, getting married young, having your children young, um, building a strong relationship, taking care of your health. You did all of this in your, in your 20s and 30s. What that means is, in your 40s and 50s, you're going to be in peak adulthood. You're going to live your best life. You're going to reach your economic potential. Uh, you're going to be earning really well. Uh, you're going to have a, a big, happy, healthy family. You know, your children are going to be young adults and they're going to be, you know, uh, playing a good role in your life, inshallah. Uh, your, your, your marriage is going to be very strong because now you have 20 years of experiences together and lifetime of bonding together. This is when you start traveling the world together as a couple. This is when you start, you know, using the money that you've been saving up over the past 20 years. This is when you really start to see your life reach that vision. Now, again, this doesn't happen for everyone. Number one, people, not everyone's going to do whatever I said about saving and investing and personal development and working their way up the career ladder. That's number one. Number two, Qadarullah. Some people's destiny is different. Allah has given each of us a different destiny. Some... Remember, in every phase, in every phase, Allah is going to test you in different ways. And that's what the next video is about, dealing with those tests. But in general, if you generally compare this 20-year period to that 20-year period, you'll probably find that the best years of your life are between the ages of 35 to 50, right? Uh, if you worked hard from the ages of 20 to 35. The problem today is that people want to enjoy themselves from the age of, of 20 to 30 and then start working at the age of 30 or 35. Now, if you do that, you're only going to reach your financial potential when you're like 60. You're gonna to be too old to enjoy anything. You're not gonna have the energy or the health or the relationships to actually enjoy anything because you wasted the best years of your life. So don't waste the best years of your life. The best years of your life should be, should be spent building yourself up. Really building your, the foundations of your family, the foundations of your career, the foundations of your finances. All of this should be done in your early years and you will see the benefits of this in the later years. Now once you reach old age, and old age is different for everybody. Some it's 50, some it's 60, some it's 70. Really depends on how you take care of your health really. That's what it comes down to. Self-care and taking care of your health. But you reach old age, right? But alhamdulillah, if you did what I, what, I, what I advised you to do, you got married young, you had kids young, you built yourself up financially, uh, you, you built a strong marriage, you know, by the time you get to old age, you'll be okay. You know, you'll be old, you'll grow old together, enjoy each other's company, uh, you'll have a lot of children and grandchildren, enjoy their company, 
not really worried about who's going to look after you because all your kids want to look after you everyone loves you uh, you'll be fine inshallah does this mean there won't be tests no Allah will test us throughout our lives throughout your lives you're going to be tested but this is planning this is planning your life you need to plan your life many people don't plan their life many young ladies say oh, I'm gonna get married in my 30s because I want to enjoy myself first so they go out and enjoy all these haram things first and then suddenly in their 30s nobody wants to marry them because they know what they did in their 20s right and before you know it you're 50 and you don't have a husband you don't have children you don't have grandchildren and your old age is looking very lonely right same with the guys that some men don't grow up they stay man childs right to the age of 35 or 40 and by the time they choose to grow up by the age of 45 or 50 it's too late nobody wants you nobody wants somebody who only became mature at the age of 45 or 50 and this is what happens when you don't plan your life when you get caught up in this dunya and enjoyment that you end up ruining your own life understand that what Allah wants for us is best for us and what we want for ourselves it's often not good for us so follow the advice of the Quran and Sunnah and plan your life accordingly get married young have children young have many children all of this benefits you throughout your life but if you following the, the nafsi ideas the, uh, of the West then this is going to have negative repercussions for the rest of your life so this is just an eye overview of what I believe the phases of life should look like if you follow my blueprint. And again, everyone's life is different and everyone's color is different. Also, I want to talk a little bit about long-term planning or long-term thinking. This is very important, right? Uh, I mentioned this in the previous video that too many of us these days have an instant gratification mindset we want things now we want to be wealthy within one year uh, we want a strong marriage within the first six months you know we want our children to be olia by age 15. we have ridiculous expectations we want everything on the spot and this is not how the world works this is not how life works you have to think long term you really have to think long term you have to plan your life several decades in advance with a clear vision for your life and marriage you have to think that like, i'm 20 now what do i want my life to be like by age 30 40 50 60 and what do i need to do now to get there too many people don't think like that they only think about the year and now they only think about i'm 20 i want to go out and have fun right and years go by with that mindset and before you know it, an entire decade of your life has been wasted. Don't be that fool. Don't be somebody who's so foolish to waste the best years of their life. Instead, plan your life. Sit and think, where do I want to be? What do I need to do to get there? Another way of planning long term is to have children young. Understand that fertility is strongest when we are young. As you get older, it gets harder to produce children and help and produce healthy children really the best time to produce children is in your 20s and 30s uh, and really you should be start getting started in your 20s at least so there, there is islamically not no downside to having children young allah increases your risk he puts baraka into your life he, he he's giving you these amazing children who are going to benefit you for the rest of your life and Islamically, there's nothing wrong with expecting your children to benefit you. This, it's this Western hyper-individualistic culture where children feel they don't owe their parents anything. Islamically, you know, your parents and, and children have a very close relationship and it is the children's duty to take care of their parents in old age. You know, there's this beautiful narration, uh, Imam al-Bukhari narrated in, in his Adab al-Mufrad, that a man was making tawaf of the Kaaba carrying his mother on his back and he went to one of the sahaba i think it was abdullah ibn umar radiallahu anhuma and asked him this tawaf i made with my mother on my back does it make up for everything she did for me in, in my youth and the sahabi replied it doesn't even make up for one labor pain it doesn't even make up for one labor pain now, this is the attitude of the sahaba 
that you owe your parents for life. So we should be taking care of our parents in old age. Our children should be taking care of us in old age. Their children should be taking care of them in old age. This is something we should teach our children early in life. And this is Islam. This is not abusive. This is not uh, manipulation. This is not uh, something that people don't deserve. This is Islam. Right? That if someone takes care of their parents in old age, then this is one of the surest paths to Jannah. Your sins are forgiven for doing this. This is like one of the best good deeds that you can do. So, how do you make sure you have children to take care of you in old age? By having children when you are young. Have children when you are young. Raise them well. Teach them the deen. You know, invest in them. Make sure that they grow into amazing people. Then by the time you reach old age, they should be in their 40s or 50s, they should be financially strong, and they should be able to take care of you. And inshallah, when they get to their old age, their children will be able to do the same. This is the Islamic way. Nowadays, we are seeing so many Muslim parents who are destitute and who are out in the streets and who are facing really difficult times because we have abandoned the Islamic way and embraced the norms of the kuffar where Allah forgive and guide our people. This is, it's, it's ridiculous to me that people do this. It's important for us to understand that anything worth having takes time. Get out of the mindset of doing something quickly. Anything worth having takes time. It takes time to build a marriage. Your relationship is not going to be perfect overnight. You need to get to know each other. You need to get used to each other. You need to become accustomed to each other's weaknesses and faults and quirks and, and strange habits. You need to grow together. You need to face the trials of life together. And if you do all of this, then over time the marriage grows strong. But the strength of the marriage after 10, 15, 20 years will be much stronger than after one or two years if you are working on it. But that takes time. It's not something you're going to get overnight. The same with children. Your children are not an overnight thing. You need to invest at least 20 years of your life into raising your children. Right? If you want them to grow into amazing people. Same with finances. You're not going to become wealthy overnight except whom Allah has written that for. Right? It is the qadr of Allah that some people may become wealthy overnight. But for the majority of people... You have to work for a very long time. You have to save money. You have to make investments. You have to spend 10, 15, 20 years working hard to make money. Same with your career. You're not going to have that perfect job or perfect business or perfect whatever you want in, when you're 21 or 22. You're going to have to start at the bottom and work your way up slowly. And this is something everyone needs to understand. To get anything, you need to focus on long term. You need to focus on doing things slowly. You, you cannot expect results quickly. Too many of us are expecting results quickly and that's where our marriages are falling apart, that's where our finances are falling apart, that's where our careers are falling apart. You know, so many young couples who get divorced in the first two or three years of marriage, they get divorced over such silly things that they had just a little bit of patience. They would have, you know, those things would have become you know, non, non-issues within a year or two. Because they, they, they might be quirks that your spouse will outgrow. They may become things that you realize later on are not a big deal. It may be something you can work through together as you get older and wiser. But instead, you know, we want that person to be perfect today. Instead of realizing everybody is a work in progress. Finally, you know, one of my last bits of advice on long-term thinking. Is I really believe that for most people, except whom Allah's God has is written differently for. For most people. If you work hard in your 20s and 30s, you can benefit of this for the rest of your life. People who really put their heart and soul into doing their absolute best in their 20s and 30s, this is something they can ride the wave of momentum that it builds for the rest of their life. But if you waste your 20s and 30s, it is much harder to build yourself up later in life. You won't have the same level of energy. You, you, you won't have that... That, that same drive and motivation. It is much harder to start building yourself up in your 40s and 50s. It's, it's not impossible. People do do it, but it's harder. Don't waste the best years of your life. Don't waste your youth. Your 20s and 30s are the best time for working hard. Whether it's working hard on your marriage or working hard on your finances or working hard in your career, working hard in your business, this is the best time to work hard. Doing so has long-term benefits. So think long term, don't think short term. Don't think I want to enjoy my 20s. Think I want to enjoy my life. Therefore, I'm going to work hard in my 20s. 
my final advice on marriage and as I say we do have two bonus videos after this one will be on dealing with the trials of life and one on frequently asked questions but my final advice in general on marriage number one communication is key communication is key always communicate with your spouse if you're having problems tell them what's wrong you you are overwhelmed or stressed out explain it to them uh, you are not feeling well let them know you have needs that are not taken care of communicate it communication is key too many times today when people come and they say they have marriage problems they don't really have a marriage problem they have a communication problem they have never told their spouse what they needed to tell them so learn the art of communication learn how to articulate yourself well sit together and have honest heart-to-heart -heart discussions and this will solve many of your marital problems number two Allah knows best so trust his laws Allah knows best so trust his laws Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that perhaps you love something and it is bad for you and you hate something and it is good for you that Allah knows and you do not know so treat the laws of marriage like this Allah knows best you love for marriage to be a certain way but per Quran and Sunnah it's a different way trust Allah's way Allah's way is best he created you he knows what's best for you therefore what he has revealed is what is best for you so follow his law and you'll always find that it will guide you to the life that is, has the most barakah in it and that is most pleasing to Allah so trust Allah's laws and do not try to change them do not give preference to man-made laws over Allah's laws do not move away from that which Allah uh, has has revealed towards that which humans have invented number three when in doubt ask a scholar when in doubt ask a scholar I know in many aspects of marriage there's difference of opinion there's confusion uh, there's different schools of thought there's arguments online don't follow people on Twitter don't follow people on YouTube don't follow people on Instagram ask the actual ulama speak to people of knowledge right? speak to a scholar of your madhab and ask them and follow what they say number four never break up the family for trivial reasons the family is a sacred unit in Islam right you have a marriage try your best to make it work try your best and, and, and realize that you and your spouse are both work in progress you both have your faults you both have your weaknesses you both have your quirks that's part of being human don't break up your marriage over trivial reasons don't break up your marriage because your partner has a minor sin there's no human out there without minor sins uh, don't break up your marriage because your partner has a you know they may smell in the morning or they may have bad breath or they may uh, you know, have a gas problem these are silly silly reasons to break up a marriage this is just people being human almost anyone you marry is going to you marry is going to have these things uh, you know don't don't break up your marriage because you don't like your sister-in-law or because you don't like your brother-in-law or don't break up your marriage because you know you're not feeling it anymore or because someone told you you deserve better or because you think the grass is green on the other side or because it doesn't look like the marriages you see on Instagram or TikTok no the only time you break up the marriage is when you've tried everything possible and you've been to the professionals for advice and everyone tells you that this marriage is not good it needs to be broken up right when you get that advice from people who hate divorce uh, people who hate divorce uh, if they are the ones advising you that this marriage needs to be broken up and you need a divorce that's when you know you need to break up a marriage but in general always strive to make things work never strive to, uh, to never never take the easy way out that, that's the thing many people look at divorce as the easy way out that you know if if I get a divorce I don't have to deal with this person's nonsense anymore well you'll have to deal with somebody else's nonsense or loneliness that's life we all have to put up with each other so don't be childish about about divorce only divorce go into divorce if there is no other way out otherwise find ways to make it work and always consult your elders and mentors for difficult decisions whether it's getting married whether it's taking a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife whether it's going into misyar whether it's getting a divorce whether it's getting a a a, a, a uh, uh, whether it's uh, separating for a while you know whatever it is you have a difficult decision to make speak to your ulama 
speak to your mentor speak to your family elders get the advice and follow the advice don't just do things uh, your own way right finally work on your relationship and never take it for granted understand that marital love is not like the love you have for your parents the love you have for your parents is natural it's there from the moment you are born and it lasts a lifetime even if you do nothing with it that that love is always there like no matter how terrible a child gets their parents still love them even if it hurts they still love them because you can't do anything about it that love is natural the love between husband and wife is not there from the time you are born. You meet this person so sometime in your teens or 20s or 30s. And you may have never met them before in your life. But you get married and you, you fall in love with each other. And this love is not, because it isn't a bond that's there from the time you are, you are born. It's something that's, that needs to be nurtured. It's something that can grow. And it's something that can decrease as well right marital love can increase and decrease depending on how you deal with your relationship so you'll find that some people take their relationship for granted they stop spending time with their spouse they stop talking to them uh, they just assume that everything's fine sometimes they stop being intimate with each other for a long time when that's happening you should be worried because this means the relationship th th is, is going a bit down. Rather, find ways to keep falling in love with each other. Understand that every five or ten years, you're going to be a different person and your spouse is going to be a different person. So fall in love with who they are now. Right? That the reasons why you love your spouse at the age of 20 will be very different from the reasons why you love them at the age of 30 or 40. And you need to keep finding those reasons and you need to work on your relationship and never take it for granted never reach a point where you say you know what i don't need to spend time with my spouse anymore our, our love is strong when you stop spending time that love will collapse so you have to keep nurturing it think of it as a plant marital love is like a plant if you water it if you nurture it if you take care of it it grows stronger and stronger and stronger but if you neglect it for too long it dies and people can fall in, in love and they can fall out of love and they can fall right back in love again and this is the thing just because you fell out of love with your spouse you know you loved them five years ago you don't love them anymore that's not a reason to jump straight into divorce because if you fell in love with them before you can't fall in love with them again maybe you'll just haven't been working on the marriage recently so instead of going straight for divorce try working on the marriage try rebuilding the love start looking for good in them start going for counseling but understand that ma relationships take work relationships take communication they take effort you you should never take the love for granted you should never take the marriage for granted it should always be a priority in your life just like your work is a priority your ibadat is a priority your children are a priority your self-care is a priority your relationship with your spouse is also a priority make time for your spouse every day or three or four times a week make spouse uh, make t quality time spend quality time with your spouse uh, sit together do things that you'll enjoy together have deep conversations with each other make sure you're intimate frequently and by the way that's also very important intimacy builds bonds of love right it's not a dirty act it builds bonds of love the more frequent you are with building the bonds of love the more in love with each other you're going to be and the less often you'll do that the more likely it is that you can fall out of love so do not take your marriage for granted do not take each other for granted understand that this is something you need to keep working on and if you reach a point in your marriage where you feel like you're falling out of love with your spouse communicate seek uh, advice from the elders figure out what went wrong and try and rebuild it together right so this is something that you need to focus on and a marriage if, if, if it's built on a strong foundation if you have if you're doing everything that Allah wants you to do and your spouse is doing everything that, that Allah wants them to do and you're both doing it for the sake of Allah and you'll make time for each other and you'll spend quality time with each other and you'll spend quality time with your children then inshallah it will be strong it will always be strong right that love will always be strong but the key is to prioritize your relationship and never to neglect it 
If you can do that, then inshallah, you will always have strong marriages. So with that, we come to the end and we just have two videos left that we will uh, cover soon. And in those videos, we will cover how to handle the trials of life together as a team, as well as the frequently asked questions about marriage. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yamma yasifun wa salam al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.